Welcome to Recovering Your Voice. My name is Bonnie. And I'm Kathy. And I'm Colette. Today, it's my very great privilege to introduce my wonderful friend, who has been my wonderful friend for 42 years. This morning, I woke up with a thousand thoughts going through my head about how I could possibly introduce her and do her justice. And as you can tell, she touches my heart very deeply in so many ways. We have been through so much together. And she is my faithful friend. And I remember a mutual friend of ours gave me a plaque. I'm just going to read what it says to you. A faithful friend is a sure shelter. She that has found one has found a rare treasure. And that's in Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. So I immediately got up and did a little bit of research about what that means exactly to be a faithful friend. And I read, a faithful friend is a sturdy shelter, a strong defense, the medicine of life. Her excellency is invaluable. She is indeed a rare treasure. So I'm honored to be able to introduce you today to my rare treasure, my faithful friend of 42 years, Inger Calder. I love you. You're my bosom buddy. And there's probably going to be a lot of tears during this interview. So please share your story with us. It's an amazing story. And our friendship and your story gets better every year. So love you. Inger, to start your story, could we go back to February of last year when I suddenly got a phone call from you sounding very confused and yet you were very peaceful saying, I don't know exactly what's happened and the doctors aren't sure, but I am in hospital in Westlaco, Texas. And I knew that you and your husband had been looking forward to an adventure, a lovely, peaceful time in Texas for a few weeks to get you through the worst of the winter season. And you had only been there a very short time, I believe, when I suddenly got this phone call. Would you like to start there? Sure, Kath. Um, as you said, we um, thought to escape winter in uh, northwestern Ontario, which is, uh, which can be quite brutal, can be 40 degrees below zero Celsius and uh, lots of snow. Um, and we had visited Texas um, the year before with my daughter and her family, um, and we visited her in-laws uh, about 12 miles away from where we ended up, the park that we ended up in. Uh, we ended up where we were because of um, people that we knew from our church here in Kenora who were in that park. And there were a lot of people from Kenora in that park. So um, basically, I chose it because my um, my husband is suffering cognitive decline and has a different has a difficult time making uh, decisions. And I thought this would be a safe place for him to be uh, with familiar people around him. And uh, so we found ourselves in, in Westlaco. We were going to be there for three months, January through March. Um, one afternoon, I lay down on the couch for a nap and um, woke up in the hospital, in the emergency ward of the hospital in Westlaco, and did not know what happened. And they told me I had had a seizure, uh, which was kind of uh, puzzling. There isn't any history of that sort of thing in our family. And um, these things just 
don't happen to me. They're not supposed to happen to me. Um, however, that was beyond my control. Uh, they told me after a bit, after different tests, MRIs and such, that um, they believed it was men benign, a benign meningioma. And, but they couldn't be sure. And um, so they gave me anti-seizure medication and um, sent me back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, my poor husband had uh, contacted our daughter, our kids, and our daughter lives in Detroit. And she flew down immediately. Her in-laws were on the spot picking her up and bringing her to us. And um, we packed a suitcase and and turned around and, and flew to Toronto um, because uh, my sister is there and we knew I would get excellent care, um, both from my sister and in the hospital system in, in Mississauga. So, um, yeah, I was in Mississauga um, longer than I had thought. It took two and a half months before we were able to come home. And um, lots of amazing and wonderful things happened there. Yeah. The care that I received um, every day astounded me. I was so grateful for the care. Um, my sister has a gift of hospitality and her husband amazing they have hosted so many people and maybe not for two and a half months but um it was an intrusion on their um, routine their uh, priorities their life but um there were no complaints there were no complaints and they were so gracious to us both that whole while we my husband and i we have a saying that we like uh, and it's one that I heard up here first nor in Northwestern Ontario, which was um, company is like fish. After three days, it starts to stink. <laughs> so we try not to be uh, to linger when we are company for, for any longer than three days, unless it's ex exceptional circumstances um, like this was. So the, um, as soon as we arrived in Mississauga, uh, my sister took me, well, and my daughter took me to uh, the emergency uh, at the hospital and um, where I had an MRI right away. And um, I saw the surgeon shortly afterwards. The details are even starting to blur. And it was, well, it was a year ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, the surgeon was amazing. He was one that we researched him, of course, and he was one of the top five uh, brain surgeons in Mississauga. It took a little while before we got to see him. Um, he was given the results, of course, of the MRI. And he was, um, initially, he used the MRI that came from uh, Texas. Um, and he assured me immediately that this was a benign tumor. Um, and um, ex he's very thorough to explain that uh, it's not uncommon in women, middle-aged women, to have them. In fact, 30% of meningiomas are in middle-aged women and older women. And, and uh, they're not sure why. Um, I'm no... Uh, expert I'm just glad to be past it um, but um, regardless um, the nurses everybody I encountered was wonderful uh, right from Texas from our neighbors in Texas who pitched in um, to um, flight attendants everybody was amazing and I was so grateful and I had no problem telling people how great I was. Mm -hmm. And almost immediately, I felt to start praying for people and tell them I was praying for them. And um, perfect strangers. I can, as you know, Kathy, I can start a conversation with anybody anywhere. And 
um, perfect strangers would, I don't know, I found a way to insert the fact that I had just had brain surgery to them. And, oh, you know, are you all right? You know, I'll pray for you. And I was so, well, let me pray for you. What's your need? I know that when I, um, we had to settle, uh, Texas was actually, um, I'll just back up a little bit, was a very stressful time for me. Um, once we decided to go, um, we thought we'd have Christmas with my brother in Arizona and we were driving and we left early enough um, and we got to um, just outside of Kansas and the transmission went on our car. And so we were holed up in St. Joseph's, a town named St. Joseph's. The, um, the tourism was not um, one of their strong suits. We were, it was suggested to us we might want to go visit the mental hospital, um, which was a museum now. Um, that was as exciting as it got. Um, no, we declined. But we did get to go one day with a rental car to the International House of Prayer in Kansas. We were um, about an hour away. And so we went there and we used uh, the facilities and asked, is there someone who can pray for us for both situations? And we did receive prayer there. It was amazing. Um, I'm afraid I blindsided my husband on that one. But uh, anyway, um, so there we sat and um, for a week, not knowing why the interruption, but um, we went on to Arizona, had a wonderful Christmas with family there. Uh, a nephew drove a thousand miles to be with us for Christmas from Oklahoma. And um, yeah, that was that was pretty that was a, a highlight to begin the trip. And then we went to Texas. And um, while we were in Texas, um, we found that being in a park in Texas in the winter was not our cup of tea. We really didn't enjoy it. I had to deal with, uh, I thought I had set up an American bank account um, and that didn't work. Um, money was still coming directly out of my checking account uh, at exorbitant, you know, difference. And um, so anyway, I, the onus of all of this was on me um, to do these things, things like setting up the internet, uh, we bought a new TV, getting the TV set up. I found it all extremely stressful. And um, so when I laid down that afternoon for a nap, I really, really needed it. Um, not knowing, of course, what would happen after that. So I'll zip back into uh, Mississauga. Um, the receptionist for our doctor was incredible. She was mature. She was kind. Um, I was overwhelmed all through this process with kindness from perfect strangers. And that's God's goodness for to me and that is answered prayer mm -hmm. i'm not shy i was on facebook at the time i've kind of backed off of facebook a little bit i feel the lord is just saying you know you could use your time more wisely um i love people's stories i i, I love people and uh so i find it very interesting to peek into people's lives and follow their reels and it can, i can spend hours just being interested in people. So I backed off of Facebook, but at the time I wasn't shy about sharing my journey. And uh, from the most surprising places, I got support from people that I didn't know had any kind of relationship with God. They were telling me they were praying for me um, and I was able to reach out. Um, I think I had pretty good humor during the whole thing because I had no pain. I never had one iota of pain in the whole process. So um, I remember after getting back to Mississauga, having to call the internet provider 
and uh, telling them I wanted to disconnect because they were billing me. And I finally got to the disconnect specialist after numerous tries and asked her, um, told her a little bit about my situation and why we were disconnecting and asked her if there was something up in her life that I could pray with her about. And she started to share a story, her story, which involved jail with her brother and losing her mom and her dad not seeing her brother's shortcomings. And um, and so I just prayed. And here this specialist, she connected because she was weeping on the other end of the line. Um, and I was just so happy to do that. I was just so happy to to pray for people. And um, so many people were praying for me. You know, that was, I felt that was the least I could do. Mm -hmm. During that time, <clears throat> I was shocked when I saw you. I'll be honest. I didn't realize the extent. Um, I don't think the the size of your incision and the procedure that um, you had been through and the number of staples, I think that's what they're called, right? Like just, yeah. it, it blew me away. And I thought, you have not uttered one word of fear or despair or anguish even through the entire thing. You were so incredibly at peace. And I remember being with you with your head stapled together and you were grabbing people and hugging people because you are, and you are very famous for your hugs. And I was wanting you to put on a crash helmet or something so that you wouldn't get bumped. And yet it didn't stop you even for one moment from being who you are and expressing such an attitude of gratitude all the way through and making the most of every opportunity to reach out to people that might need a hug or a word of encouragement or or prayer or even just your beautiful smile it 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 absolutely blew me away the way that you continued to be yourself through all of this it was amazing I, you're amazing god is amazing god is faithful mm -hmm. um and i as i was reflecting this morning before we began what is the attribute of god that i love the most at this place in my life and it is god's faithfulness um i was just listening to damaris carbaugh she sang with the brooklyn tabernacle choir mm -hmm. and she sang a song saying he is so faithful to me and i absolutely love that song it brings me to worship every time and great it is is his faithfulness mm -hmm. and that song that um so many times in my life when i was in despair you know god would bring that song his faithfulness and i even have a plaque in my bathroom that says god is faithful to all his promises um, I, I did have moments, uh, to be perfectly honest, when I didn't know if I was going to live or die. And um, the word that I recently heard, of, again, is hinini, which is uh, Hebrew for here I am. Or you have my yes, Lord, years ago. Um, during a, a difficult time in my life when uh, my husband did not want to be married any longer. Um, after the initial shock, I remember just saying to the Lord, here I am. I have no one but you. I, I did have friends, but they all had their own families and I didn't want to intrude on other people's family lives and their priorities and things they were doing. And I felt like I was all alone God was faithful. He provided. And I just said, Lord, whatever you have for me, you know my future. I don't. But I didn't know the word hinini at the time. But 
it is uh, exactly how I felt then and how I feel today. Um, he knows my way. He knows the path I take. He knows the way through the wilderness. And um, I have confidence because he's proven himself faithful to me so many times. I didn't want to die. You know, I felt, oh, like probably everyone who faces that moment, there, there's so much I need yet to do. And I took comfort in the words that had been spoken over me, and some of them by you have, you know, about what God has in store, uh, about my future. And I thought, well, I haven't fulfilled those yet, so it can't be my time. It can't be my time to go. My husband, um, and oh, I'll just interject, we were uh, apart for five years uh, after which he proposed reconciliation. And um, it was my choice to stay, to come back or to stay where I was. And I believe in my marriage vows. And I knew that God would get me through what I needed to get through. And um, we reunited. And just in April, we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. So God makes all things new. Um, during this time, he would hold me tightly every night because he was terrified to lose me. He didn't know what was happening. And um, he didn't have the same capacity as he had once upon a time. Um, his cognitive ability is declining still. And uh, while I am praying for God to restore him uh, completely, even better than he was, Kind of like that Japanese pottery that when they fix it, they put the pieces back together with gold, making something more beautiful than it was originally. I'm believing for that. Uh, if God chooses not to do that, then um, he'll look after me. He'll, he'll help us walk this path together. And um, a lot of people say to me, how can you, um, oh, poor you, you know, dealing with the cognitive decline. I, I won't say the other words. I, I will not give the enemy that satisfaction of, of saying the words uh, that this condition is called by. Um, because I know God can reverse whatever. But I don't feel put upon or troubled by the future in this um it bewilders me at times it challenges me a lot but i feel like why not why not me why why shouldn't i be going through this and um it's challenging me to be a better person challenging me to be a better me for his sake and for my own, and for the sake of the people around us, our kids. We have three beautiful children. Like I said, our daughter came to Texas in a heartbeat, dropped everything. She has a very responsible job. She dropped everything and came. More than once, she came up to Mississauga from Detroit several times. And um, one of our sons um, also dropped everything, flew down to Texas. The neighbors helped pack up the car with all our belongings. And uh, we were only halfway into our contract um, to stay there into our rental agreement. And um, the other son has uh, we once and uh, he wasn't free to come, but he was there. You know, he called and, and I knew uh, that we've been blessed with children who honor their parents. And uh, yeah. It just so I have I'm sorry, I'm a rabbit trail kind of person. So Kathy, bring me back. Um, Inger, I was just going to say I was so impressed with your children. Um have, being part of regular updates. And I remember your daughter posted something that really touched my heart. The whole thing touches my heart, obviously. Um, I'm the tears on the team. But she said, if my 
how did it go? If my mom has ever prayed for you, please, will you pray for my mom now? And I thought of all the people that you have reached out to. You know, the scripture, it says when you cast your bread on the water, it, it will come back to you. I'm sure there probably was an easier way um, that that could have been orchestrated, but you have cast so much bread on the water of your life with so many people, your children, your children's friends, their extended families, your neighborhood, the beautiful park where you live that I get to share with you in the summer. You have cast so much bread there, so much love, so much faithfulness, so much, so much. And I was really touched by how much and how many people reached back to you and said, oh, I remember when you prayed for me, you brought me a meal, you gave me a ride, you picked up groceries, you helped clean my house, you like you have done so much in your life and, and continue to you always, always make time for people and their needs. It's, it's just who you are. So for the amount of love that you have poured out, it was wonderful to see hundreds of people responding and saying, I remember when, and now it's basically, it was a privilege for so many to be able to give back to you. So um, I was excited to see that. I was, I think I was amazed at how so many people were connected and, and were interconnected with you and the way that your family pulled together and continues to pull together to be a support to you because I know that your life is not easy and yet I see you even last summer with your, you know, your head put back together after your surgery. It was it was amazing to me. It you're just amazing. And and I know that it's God. I know it's because you spend a lot of time. You're up early in the morning and you practice such an attitude of gratitude and oh, you make the most of every opportunity to give and to give and to give. So I think it was a wonderful season of receiving for you as well. I know you were very, very humbled by all of it because I don't think you realized the impact that you had had on so many lives. There's a lot of talk these days of superpower. Um, and you know that this person's superpower is their administrative gift. Um, um, like yourself, speaking of love, um, you sure pour it out, Cap, to everyone. But um, in that same post where that you spoke of Christy saying, if my mom has ever, she finished that. And it just wrapped itself around my heart. She said, she didn't know the outcome either at the time. And she said, love like anger. She admonished everybody reading her post to love like anger does. And that was so humbling. I think my superpower, thanks to the Father, is love. I, I am not a debater. I can't argue. I won't argue. I, I can't debate. I forget often what I just read. Um, I'm not a, uh, I don't feel I'm a, an intellectual at, by any means, but I can love. I can love. I was challenged by a friend's son. Uh, he was asking me theological questions and I was like, oh, sorry. You know, I, I can't go there. I can't do it. And I'm not going to pretend to try. Um, I said, but um, if you ask anybody who knows me, you'll know that I love. That's what I can do. I can love. And um, I think it's it's God's love in me spilling over to others and all I have to be is a channel I don't have to try I I just let it flow yeah I'm grateful that I can do that 
I'm grateful. I often hear you say, thank you for loving me so well. And I've often thought, I wonder, I wonder if I, I love people well. I hope I do. Uh, you have this amazing ability to see needs. And if you're not able to meet them, you know somebody who does. And you're not hesitant to reach out in love, but also to um, ask for help, which is really good. Or to say, I know someone who who needs that right now or could use a word of encouragement or do you know what I mean? Like you are kind of like a big network, a resource center, if you will, <laughs> because you know somebody in every area, every age, every gender, every calling, you know somebody and you are not hesitant to plug people in I don't know like I know that I am the tears in the body of Christ what would you say you are or who would you say you are what is your part I know it's love but how do you what do you call that when you plug people in together well if we're all part I'm not an ear I'm not a nose I'm not a hand necessarily I'm connective tissue that's what I like to say, that I'm connective tissue in the body of Christ. And I love connecting with people. I'm interested in their stories. And um, I'm learning that I have two ears and one mouth. Um, anybody who knows me know I, knows I talk a lot. Uh, in fact, one time someone said to me, oh, that lady, hmm, we're not going to the door. We'll let my wife deal with it. Because um, she talks almost as much as you do. <laughs> Ouch. That, that, that hurt a lot. But I think if it had been said any other way, I might have missed it. And I carried that for a long time to remember not to talk so much, not to uh, command the room, but to let other people speak. It's not always about me. It may not appear that way others but I'm very I'm very aware of that in, in my life um, to let it be about other people that they are important and maybe they need to know how important they are they don't know it because I know that when people when you especially Kat, um will uh, compliment me or um, encourage me I have a hard time accepting the 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 anger that you see and that the anger some other people see and if i feel that way i'm sure pretty sure other people feel that way too and if i can help them to realize that they matter they're significant that they have gifts that just you know what they do blesses other people um i want to do that i want to encourage other people um, in the body of christ and outside body of Christ it doesn't matter the age it doesn't matter the age we all need it at every stage of our life to be encouraged Kathy had asked about what would you be in the body and after you shared that anger all I could see was you're the father's eyes to see people the way he sees them and in that your heart is so expanded and you become his heart so I would say you have daddy's eyes. You have daddy's eyes. You said a comment, Inger, that just hit me. You said you were overwhelmed by kindness. That is just so beautiful that the people reached out and um, communicated that to you. Can you expand a little bit more on that, being overwhelmed by kindness? I don't even remember saying it, actually, but... Um... In being overwhelmed by kindness, well, it, it started from the very beginning. Every person that I encountered was kind. Um, we've all had experiences where people have been unkind or abrupt, um, not because uh, they find you objectionable or they find you um, annoying, 
uh, people sometimes are abrupt. I think right away, what's going on in their life? What is, um, what are they having to deal with today? And um, I'm just one more thing. So I didn't encounter any of that. Um, like I said, down to the smallest detail, the tone of voice people spoke to me in, the consideration um, in the hospital. Uh, it sounded like the, uh, I was only in hospital in Mississauga for two days and the um, nurse's room sounded like it was right next door and they were having a wonderful time in the nurse's room and I wanted to sleep. And um, I mentioned it when the nurse finally came in. I said, "Is do I have a door in my room? Do you think you could possibly close it? And she said, oh, she apologized. She was so sorry. And I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry for, you know, troubling you. But I would, she was, she was lovely. She, she was absolutely lovely. I wanted to know more about her. Um, and I didn't get to know. Um, and, um. Yeah, uh, like I said, the, the doctor, the surgeon, he, I told him when I visited him in his office prior to the surgery um, that I'd been praying for him and his family before he did the surgery. Uh, praying for him, well, by extension, automatically you want to pray for his family too, because that's that's what's really important to him, right? And um, if things are good at home, then things are good at work. And um, I just wanted to bless him. And he was so grateful. He came from a, a Catholic background, um, from Hungary. And uh, he said, pray for my two sons. He said, "If when you pray. And I told him that I'd ask my network to pray for him as well. And... Uh, he was, he was so grateful. And when the interview was over with him and we got up to leave, he reached out for a hug. Well, you know me. <laughs> well, Kathy knows me. I'll never refuse a hug. Um, one of my friends up here calls herself a huggerite. And that's me. I'm a huggerite for sure. And, uh, and Sundays at uh, <clears throat> the church I attend, um, Jubilee Church, I just, I'm so grateful for this little church. We minister to street people. Um, the congregation is a bunch of misfits, people who realize they need Jesus. And it's a place where I felt that I could give and not just take or receive. Um, but I do receive because I get my quota of hugs for the week at church. I hug everybody. I try to get there little early so I don't have to spend my our greeting time our little five minute time that pastor gives us to greet one another rushing around to reach everybody I try to get everybody before service starts <laughs> to hug and and that is um our church is is a wonderful wonderful place where you really see uh widows and orphans being ministered to we have a lot of street people in Kenora. We're a downtown ministry, uh, many addicts, and um, the byproduct of addicts, children who are who are hurting, children who will live forever with fetal alcohol syndrome um, disorder, uh, FASD, uh, because of choices their parents make, and which makes a very difficult life for them. But we've also seen God in the business of restoration. People who, whose lives seemed hopeless. One young man, I, I met him, he's working in the grocery store. I said, what time did you start today? He said, five o'clock. I said, what? Five o'clock, you've been here since five? He said, well, somebody has to unload the truck. When I first met him, he was on disability. He was living in an apartment. Um, and existed he didn't have a life and one would have thought that he had no potential but he just bought his second vehicle he told me he's now saving for a down payment on a house that's what he wants buy a house um that's 
that happens a lot in our church. And we're small enough that we can engage with one another. And since Cap comes down a lot, she came every weekend last summer to look after me, get my garden in, because we love gardening. Now, all those, all those things you see online about, you know, I need another plant, that's us. <laughs> And we have a third friend who's the same. Like she, we we roped her in. She wasn't a gardener, was she, Kathy? But uh, she sure is now. Um, and it's true. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. Just time to weeding when you you get to um, commune with the Father and He gets to drop secrets in your heart. It's a wonderful place to be. Anyway, all of these people. God loves them as much as he loves me. And um, we were talking about kindness and off I went on a rabbit trail again, but strangers, strangers who um, I had a brain, I had brain surgery, oh, you know, and, and their expression of, and people who said strangers who said they would pray for me. No. Like, Wow. And I'll pray for you. What's your need? You know, um, just kindness begets kindness, doesn't it? And uh, it's it's a wonderful way to live, to be on the receiving end. And I've had my share of unkindness um, during the whole COVID period. Um, and it was very hurtful, but it doesn't change who God is. It doesn't change who God is. The bumps are for climbing on. The, the challenges we face in our life only serve, if we are willing, only serve to draw us closer to God, to strengthen us and um, help us in our walk so that when somebody else comes along and they're climbing a similar bump, you can encourage them and comfort them with the comfort we're being comforted with. There is humor. There has been humor along the way. Um, at my sister, she has a collection of wigs, and so I tried to take pictures of myself wearing uh, Viking horns with braids, uh, posted those on Facebook, um, had various hats, um, just to keep things light. And uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. My brothers were Job's comforters. Uh, I have a brother in Alaska who shared... Um, when I was pending surgery and we were researching what's a surgery going to look like. And he shared, Oh yes, my friend, she had, a, she had to have brain surgery and they cut her along the hairline and they peeled her face forward over her eyes. And uh, then they, you know, and now you can, you can't even see it. You can't tell. And I'm like, Oh, great. That sounds really wonderful. Um, as it is. Uh, my surgeon did an excellent job. I My head is a, uh, a landscape of the moon with bumps and craters and all kinds of interesting things. But uh, I think he did a good job. Um, the scars are hidden in my airline. And uh, it's just me when I get feeling them, think, oh, my goodness. But thankfully, I have hair. And um, it covers it all. My other brother, uh, when I came home, because... I had grown my hair long um, past my shoulders and I have thin hair because I really like the look of messy buns and I thought it was a really easy care. So at the time of the seizure, it's not my seizure ever was it my seizure. It's the seizure. And I just um, encourage people who have been diagnosed with something, don't own it. Don't call it your cancer. Don't call it your multiple sclerosis. Don't call it um, your whatever. It is a thing that has happened. It is a diagnosis perhaps that has been given to you, but it is not yours to own. It is not because you have a heavenly father who um, you cast all your cares on him and he cares for you in every every aspect of your life anyway so the only the top of my head was shaved and I had this long thin hair that could not go up in a messy bun anymore because this part was all missing and my other brother said to me 
Do you remember that TV show, The Beachcombers? You remind, well, when I, when I look at you, you remind me of Relic. And he was the grumpy old guy in, in the movie. And I thought, wow, okay, now it's time to cut my hair. And I had my head shaved. And um, you're supposed to wear a hat. I couldn't be bothered. Um, it is what it is. And, um, you know, people didn't like looking at me with no hair. They could look away. But um, <laughs> it, I, it, it wasn't a big thing for me. And uh, it helped me make that decision. What do I do with my hair? Oh, the angst. Do I grow it? Do I keep it short? Oh, the angst with my hair. Well, now that it's been settled for me, my hair is going to be short from here on in. Wash and wear hair. I love it. God took care of that question that I had. What do I do with my hair? It wasn't important. It's really not that important. So the humor, the humor is there. I love my brothers and, and I know they love me. And, uh, and the prayer and the support. One of my brothers uh, was available to come down and lived with us for nine weeks to make sure that everything was being taken care of. And um, I loved reconnecting with him and having that opportunity just for nine weeks to share with the, how much God loves us. And uh, he was loving me through my brother. Amazing. Inger, I, I love your attitude. Your attitude is so incredible. Um, I You said another statement. <laughs> it challenges, meaning the tumor, challenges you to be a better person. I mean, if we could all take life's challenges, what life throws at us, and take that attitude, where where does that come from? It's it's his grace. It's his grace. It's it comes, I guess, from being willing to listen and to be being willing to ta be taught. I may not have what a lot of others do, but I have what he's given me. And it's enough. It's it's enough. There are times when I I'm not a saint. Ask can you ask my family uh, by any means. But um, the Lord has just placed that in my heart. Uh, the challenges, whatever the result was, it, I had said Hini. You know, here I am. Here I am. I, you have my yes. It doesn't matter what you have my yes, because I'm learning to trust that you have my best interests at heart. You created me for a reason, and I need to cooperate with you in the best way I can. And the word says that, you know, we, we have these troubles. We're going to have the troubles, and we have a choice of how we're going to face them. And I hope I'm choosing the right way. I have in Kathy, Kathy, I have in you a friend that you get to see the ugly side of me, the needy side more than anybody else. And because of Christ in you, I'm safe to explore that and, and to hear um, just that still small voice, not to miss that still small voice telling me, well, suggesting, because it's my choice whether I deal with it or not. Um, how I'm going to answer uh, a challenging situation, living with a person who has cognitive de decline um, is really challenging when you think you've dealt with something and the question comes up again 10 minutes later and it's not his fault. It's not, he, he didn't ask for this. If he had a choice, he definitely not want this, but um I can I can react or I can respond. I choose responding as often as I can uh, rather than react. And and sometimes you poke me enough and I'll react. But um, for the most part, I can't do that without spending daily time with the Lord. Even if I don't get to sit down in my prayer chair and 
read my Bible and be in the word, um, worship him and journal. Oh my goodness. This is my journal right now. I got these books in, in a store in Michigan, really super cheap. And it's a kind of a discount store and they have these wonderful journals and they have scripture on the front. The first, the scripture on this one says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I just write my thoughts. I just write my thoughts and I talk to the Lord by journaling. And I'm talking to him all the time. I'm aware that he's right there with me. Um, and he hears everything. How can he minister to me? How can he care for me when, when he's busy over in Israel? When he's busy in Haiti? When he's busy? Well, what, it, what does omnipotent mean? What does omniscience mean? He, because he's God, he can be everywhere and he can be with me as if I'm the only one that he has to care about. That is, that blows my mind. It blows my mind and it makes me not dismiss, well, God's too busy for me, so I'll just wallow here. I'll do some belly button gazing and I'll complain to Kathy and whoever else will listen. God is so good. He's He's there. He's there with me uh, all the time, even if I don't, you know, get to the word every day, even if I don't journal every day, even if I'm nasty, you know, he's still there. He still loves me regardless. Inga, can you tell us please how you are doing now as far as um, physically, mentally with your brain? Are you back to full capacity? Maybe better. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Um, I just recently in April, on April the 16th this year, had a my first of five follow-up MNR, M <laughs> MRIs, uh, which um, I already have my appointment for next year uh, in April in, in Toronto. Um, and the dear doctor said, look at this. It's perfect. It's perfect. And a, a, a testament to his skill in removing everything that he said had come out in one piece. Um, I had lost my driver's license, uh, uh, which I was able to get back in October. And once I had my driver's license back, I informed the law firm where I'm a temp um, I relieve the receptionist, the admin assistant, when she's not able to be at work. Um, I informed them that I was available again because now I was driving to work. And uh, I worked for five weeks the first of the year and um, sporadically since then, which is great, which is great. Um, and Duncan and I had gone to uh, the East Coast after my MRI to celebrate our 50th anniversary. We traveled so well together. It was, we didn't have an argument once. Just, you know, I, I had the opportunity to learn about soft answers, turning away wrath, and then being so amazed at when I said, when I heard that still small voice, try saying this. Um, and I would do that, it had the desired reaction that I wanted, that have always wanted for 50 years in my husband, rather than needing to be right. I have that affliction. I like to be right. I hope I'm humble enough to say, oh, I wasn't right. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I let somebody else be right for a change. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm well, I can, I can swim, I can walk. The undesirable side effect was the fact that the steroids made me want to eat everything in sight. And my dear brother-in-law would cook five portions for four people and just say, oh, that last one's for you, which I happily obliged at the time because I was ravenous. I gained quite a lot of weight, which 
on top of the weight I already had that I didn't want. So um, I'm I'm working at losing that. Yeah, that's I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you, Kathy. I had previously been very politically involved uh, and then got super disillusioned and so washed my hands of the whole thing for a couple of years and uh, was quite surprised when I was approached to um, sit on a national committee with one of the major political parties in Canada. Uh, I don't even know how they found me. I'm again, intimidated. Um, when I was given this opportunity, I thought, nah, mm -mm. Um, that's not what I want to do right now. But immediately I heard, he, is who, he who has called you is faithful to do it. And so that's an assignment. And that's how I tend to, like, the work at the law office, I get to pray for the lawyers um, I get to pray for the Indigenous people because it's a law firm that deals exclusively with Indigenous issues. Um, I get to love on them. I get to receive their love in return. It's it's a wonderful environment. And um, being on this committee, um, again, I receive Kanini. Here I am, if you want me to do this, Lord, you can shut the door. I had to campaign for three weeks uh, with every um, EDA, which is the Electoral District Association, the Writing Association in Ontario, um, 121 uh, of them. I had to campaign for a position on this committee that I didn't even know what they do. Um, but... He who called me is faithful to do it. So, and then I, I was successful with the assistance of a couple of Christian lobby groups. Um, they helped me. And I find myself with lawyers, uh, very highly educated people, um, all of which is very intimidating. And then there's me and you know, I kind of feel like the person in the overalls, you know, with the one strap hanging down, hayseed in my hair and a straw in my teeth. And um, I'm kind of, <laughs> here, here I am with all of these erudite people. And um, immediately the Holy Spirit said, no, he called you for a reason. He called you for a purpose. You have something that he wants to express through you. And I've been encouraged that God always puts things just beyond our reach. Right? It, uh, I can't remember who said it, but um, our reach must exceed our grasp. Otherwise, what's a heaven for? Heaven is there to help us reach the, for those things that are beyond our grasp. I would not have thought myself to be in this position but if he called me to it, then he has a role for me to play. And I'm willing to give him my best. So there I am. Uh, I do have a political past. I was uh, greatly in disenchanted. And I thought I was done with that part of my life. But uh, surprise, I'm not. <laughs> I find it on. ironic. <laughs> yeah, I find it ironic, Anger, that Peter was sent to the Jewish people and Paul to the Gentiles. And you're saying, I feel unqualified. Sounds like girl, you're totally qualified. Thank you. Only, only in his strength, only in his wisdom, only in his power. Anger. Yeah. There, there are probably people listening right now that have gone through hardships similar to yours. Maybe they didn't have brain a brain tumor and and um, you know subsequent surgery, but they're going through a rough time. What would you say to them to help them through it? I would say the God who created them knows exactly what they're going through. He allowed it. He allowed it. He could have stopped it if he wanted to, but he allowed it. And the Word of God says. 
that in all things give thanks. In all things give thanks. All things work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. I am so overwhelmed. I just read about how he called me in John 17. He called us. He chose me. If he chose me, he's not going to uh, do a secondhand job. He's my creator. He chose me because he has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for everyone. And it may be hard in the beginning to see what good could possibly come out of this situation. But that's not our responsibility either, is it? It's he who brings all things together for the good. And we may not know what good things happen. I had a girl come and say to me a couple years ago, Inger, I just wanted to tell you, I'm dating my ex-husband again. And I thought you would want to know because you reconciled too. You know, and I'm excited to hear that they're together again. It's, it's, it's just wonderful. But both she and I, we went through rejection, thinking nobody wanted us. I would see couples holding hands and walking down the street, and I would just, ah, uh, you know, why is this happening to me? Um, I was really mad at God about that. I really was because I was thinking, I've trusted you. I have walked with you, and this is still happening to me. But I had five years of saying, here I am, and what adventures I had. I'll tell you, I had one. In fact, my posse, as I call my friends, my close group, um, would say, where's Waldo now? Mm, she's in Honduras. Oh, no, she's on a reserve in far northwestern Ontario. Oh, no, she's in Mississauga right now. Oh, maybe she, you know, I, I couch surfed. I, I, I rented space from friends. Um, and I thank God he gave me the nature that he did to be able to cope with all of that. I lived for 16 months in a hotel room using the bathroom sink to do wash my dishes and cook in an electric frying pan. And I mean, the circumstances were far from ideal. But I had said, Hinini, and, and he, he made it beautiful. And I have relationships, friends from those years. Um, I mother young men for some reason. I have two boys, but young men just walk into my heart. Um, young people do and walk into my heart and stay there. And I lift them up before the Lord. And they'll often say, you're like my mother. <laughs> Yay! Good. Then you've given me the right to speak in your life. And I will now hear this. <laughs> God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. I hope that answered your question, Bonnie. Yes, it did. Very much so. Thank you. Anger, I, I have the feeling that we could have you on for many more different stories. <laughs> Not I've just this them. one. <laughs> I've got lots. <laughs> if you have a story like Inger that you would like to share with us on Recovering Your Voice, you can write us at recoveringyourvoice at gmail.com. But until next time, please keep sharing your story. <laughs> do you it's, see that on mine yeah it's not going to work because we can see it that is not good let me see if i can pull that away no. all of these technical difficulties Inger, that i know nothing about and inger neither do we <laughs> she's getting kleenex be right back. okay <laughs> she's the heart of the group oh. Any Bonnie's group. the brain. Bonnie's the brains. You, <laughs> and who are you? Should I plug these in, do you think? Kathy, <laughs> did you have to ask? <laughs> she, she's she's doing this. The mouth of the group, girl. The mouth of the group. I'm going to blow my nose, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, enough uh, of that, Kathy. Okay.
Got it. Okay. I love I this. Cool. Don't you, Inger? We're all, it's your fault. Inger always says, are you up for an adventure? An adventure. <laughs> an adventure. Because my parents were Swedish and could not say V. So it came out oh. W. Uh, so we always have an adventure. Yeah. yeah. I'm Swedish too, by the way. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. God, you know what? You'll have to scrub this one because I forgot where I was going with it. <laughs> Thank God you are a good editor, Bonnie. Kathy said you're just the best. I have to tell you about. Um, you know how much Kathy loves gardening, I'm sure, if you know Kathy. Uh, so what I gave her for her birthday one year, <laughs> what, two years ago, Kathy, is I got a half ton load of manure. And that's what she got for her birthday. 